What inspired me to take this project on was really uh, being able to document this time in history and mostly being part of the movement, wanting to protest and show up and support the movement and really be a part of this change I've been waiting for for a very long time in America and uh, globally. So it's just a natural evolution for me to take this project on. I don't even see it as a project. I just see it as a contribution and just being in the mix with everybody. And uh, so, yes, it, it was really born out of my, you know, my uh, love for black culture and Black Lives Matter is a very important movement, always has been. And uh, this is just uh, taking it a step, a giant step uh, further by really being part of it. And uh, even with having started my fundraising initiative with uh, bitonphoto.com. Uh, and uh, to this day, I've sold uh, about 135 prints and raised over $30,000, which is pretty incredible. And uh, so I really uh, am not only documenting, but I'm proud to be able to give back to the movement with uh, this photography and documentation. So this was not assigned to me. This is something that I just showed up to to do and uh, always have a camera with me and knew I would be capturing some interesting images. And as a result, the press has come to me, interviewed me on uh, CBS, NBC, about other requests, um, which I accept as long as I can spread the message of uh, what is going on. It's affected me as a photographer in the way that it's made me feel a greater sense of purpose through photography. The photography is no longer just a means to an end. It's not just something I do to support my family and myself, uh, which I've always been so passionate about it. And I get to work on incredibly passionate projects, but this one has gone straight to my heart and it's really made me feel dedicated and made me feel like a part of something almost spiritual and, and something, you know, that is a great evolution, a societal evolution. And I think it will serve as a time capsule for what we're going through right now. I love to shoot black and white. Uh, in a lot of cases, I shoot with uh, like a monochrome, which is a black and white camera, uh, because I feel that black and white is more timeless. And of course, my style of black and white photography is very highly contrasted, uh, kind of sharper, if you will, black and white than the traditional black and white. I like hyper realism and I feel like this way that I process my photos, the way that I shoot my photos, some, some of these protest photos, you know, in broad daylight accentuate the silver aspect of the uh, image and everything looks kind of shiny and metallic. Uh, that is definitely intended. That's a style. If people know my work, that uh, has always been my style. Even with color photography, concert photography, album covers, book covers, whatever, uh, is always very high contrast. Um, so that's just a result of me liking surrealism and being a big fan of, of uh, Man Ray and and, uh, you know, the, the surrealists like uh, Tristan Zara, Picabia, all these guys through their art. So sometimes I try to uh, evoke a certain surrealist look to my images. And uh, very often I'm told, oh, this is so surreal. And that's kind of what I go for, a uh, dramatization, if you will, of what's actually happening. What surprised me is the viral nature of it. I never expected some of these photos to you know, make it to morning news and being all, all around the world and being posted by, you know, Essence Magazine and Afropunk and Barbara Streisand and Black Love and all these great uh, accounts and, and uh, media accounts. And so I've been very surprised by the way these images have gone viral. People telling me, oh, I saw this photo on TV this morning. Uh, that's pretty amazing. My most challenging subject to date, I would have to say, was photographing Dick Gregory, um, 
who passed away in 2017. I photographed him in 2016. He's one of my absolute idols, uh, uh, incredible activist, stand up, started as a stand up comedian, uh, but became an activist. And uh, that was a very interesting story because someone came to my Leica exhibition called Darker Than Blue, which was a whole tribute to civil rights era photography of the Gordon Parks and Bruce Davidson, Eli Reed. Uh, so that was already the style of what I'm doing now. This was uh, a little over four years ago. And someone who worked with Dick Gregory came to see my show and really loved the work and asked me if I would come shoot him. And it was a dream to me. Uh, you know, I had people like uh, Quincy Jones and Sidney Poitier, Cecily Tyson, all these legends in my show, but Herbie Hancock, but uh, did not have Dick Gregory. So I was really excited about it. Went to the improv where he was doing a stand up show and he was very aggressive with me. He thought I was part of the improv and he said I had to pay him before I could take his photo. And I was a little confused since I was asked to come shoot the photos and, uh, you know, was told that he was excited about me shooting. And he obviously wasn't. He didn't know didn't know who I was. And uh, so that was very tough. And it took me about an hour to start shooting. And finally, when he realized that I was independent, that I didn't work for the promoter, didn't work for the club, didn't work for a newspaper, he understood, you know, what the situation was and then allowed me to shoot. I missed a lot of photos I wish I had shot backstage, but that's when he wouldn't allow me to shoot. So uh, that was the most difficult for sure. Uh, distinctive characteristics of my work, I would say, uh, I'm often told by people, oh, you captured my soul, you captured my essence. Um, so I think that's what I strive for, is that even if I get one frame, one shot, I like to get that person's soul. And so I think it's, it's just about capturing the very uh, instant the person is just at their most pure. And that's what I try to capture. And uh, so I think that mixed with my hyper surrealism that I talked about, I think uh, is what makes my photography mine, where people often tell me like, I saw that photo, I knew it was yours, which is really the greatest compliment you can get as a photographer. I was always a fan of visual arts. I grew up in Paris and uh, used to go with my dad to uh, the flea markets every Sunday and I used to see a lot of art. That's how I started collecting vinyl records and posters, jazz posters, movie posters, 99% uh, of the time black artists. And so I always knew I was attracted to the visual aspect of it. Uh, some of the best albums I've listened to in my life I discovered because of the cover. I just thought it was a great cover, so I got it and then it turned out to be a great album and uh, sometimes not the case but so for me um i was passionate from the time i was a little kid and when i started doing graphic design the natural evolution for me was to do album covers because i collected vinyl my whole life i still do um, and i collected photography you can see some of it on my wall but i uh i've basically always been into visual arts uh, and so as soon as i could i started designing covers designing books designing posters for movies for concerts designing merchandise and photography became the kind of focal point of my career at this time and i still do a lot of graphic design and art direction obviously and a lot of album covers and book covers uh like uh, Glenn Friedman's uh, photography of Run DMC and the Beastie Boys, Together Forever, came out recently. That's the latest book I designed. So I like to be involved in all aspects of design and photography, all aspects of visuals. So uh, that's uh, kind of something that just came naturally from growing up around it. And my parents collected wonderful art as well, like Paul Collin, and lots of images of Josephine Baker, and. Uh, Goldscheider statues and Rob statues. And so it just kind of came naturally. The thought process doesn't really differ between photography and film to me because I, if I'm shooting a film or a video or a commercial, uh, a recent one would be the Don Perignon commercial with uh, Lenny Kravitz and Zoe Kravitz, Susan Sarandon, Harvey Keitel and others. Uh, I look at it as photography in motion. So 
every frame needs to look like one of my photographs. That's what I strive for and with music videos. And I hope uh, someday we'll make a feature film where I can really exercise that. So there is no big difference except for the motion. Memorable turning point in my career. A uh, memorable turning point would have to be, one would be when uh, I became friends with Quincy Jones in the early 2000s, I believe, early to mid 2000s. At the time I was doing a lot more jobs. Uh, I was managing artists, producing things, art directing, designing, making films, making videos, uh, shooting photography, editing, and all these things at the same time. And I was, I was overwhelmed, I never slept, I was often sick. And a lot of these jobs I was doing weren't really making me money, whereas others were paying the bills. And I was sitting with Quincy Jones, I brought him this CD by this artist, I'm managing this thing I produce, this box set I designed, this book I designed, blah, blah, blah. And he just stopped me in my tracks and said, listen, you have to remember this is the music business. It's not just about music, but business is a very important factor. And what I see is you're doing a lot of things and you could just be doing half of those things and getting more sleep and, and supporting your family and probably making more money than you are because you're distracting yourself by wanting to do everything. And that kind of shocked me at first. I almost took offense to it the first minute. And then I realized this is a very loving, thing he's selling me. And at that time, I kind of stopped the management. I stopped other things I was doing and just focused heavily on the photography. That's around the time I started working with Lenny Kravitz and went out on the road and Lenny propelled me into photography. I was doing it uh, kind of independently and he, he just threw me onto the scene with shooting all his stuff and suddenly, you know, millions of people seeing the work and shooting magazine covers and music videos and all that uh, really uh, would have to be a, a big uh, turning point. The most personal project to me would have to be, well, now it's this, now it's this uh, Reflections of an Uprising, which is what I, I call this uh, protest documentation. And it's very tied to my Darker Than Blue project, which was my most passionate ever, which is photographing black communities all over the world, a lot in the Bahamas, because I was there with Lenny a lot at the time, uh, but throughout the world, you know, from South Africa to Italy, Paris, uh, LA, New York, I can't even think there were Memphis, Nashville, Philadelphia. So just documenting the culture. And so this is an extension of that. And uh, it's just something that's touched me deeply because all the art I've been into my whole life are black art, black music, black cinema. I've collected all these things that I still do. And uh, working with artists that were my favorite black artists. And so it's just very close to my heart and I will always uh, continue this documentation, I feel like this uh, darker than blue and protest work is just kind of one entity. Basically, I just want the realist representation of what is actually happening in life. And with darker than blue would be in, in the black communities all over the world, drawing attention to the beauty of it. Even if, it, if, it, if they're impoverished, there's so much beauty and drawing attention can also help, like what I'm doing now with fundraising through photography. Uh, I think that's a great way to do that. Um, so I like to do exhibitions not very often, but when I do them, every image has to be poignant. Every image has to have a strong message of humanity behind it. And on the other side of it, with my hand portraits, I like to capture the soul of a person through their hands. And uh, this has been one of the most exciting things I've ever done. And I, I'm obsessed with it. I still do it all the time. And uh, so I, I look forward to doing a lot more of that. I think cultural and social factors uh, that have informed my work is just being in the communities, you know, being surrounded by black artists. I mean, the you know, like uh, right now, I, I spent a lot of my time working with Dave Chappelle who's always been one of my favorites, the time I spent with Lenny Kravitz, uh, working on this Prince projects or Blue Note Records or Marvin Gaye or Bob Marley. Uh, so many projects of all these artists I grew up 
obsessing with James Brown. You know, I'm still working on a lot of James Brown projects, a lot of Marvin Gaye projects as a graphic designer. Uh, a very exciting Prince project I worked on coming up. So just living my dream. And I think being surrounded by it, being accepted by them, uh, the P these artists being, bleh, sorry, being accepted by these artists means the world to me because I know they see what I see. It's not just a, a race division. It's not, I'm white, you're black. We are all human beings and we're all here to spread love and, and the message of hope and, and change and change is coming, which is very exciting to me. And I'm happy to document the change that is coming. Advice for aspiring photographers, yes. I was just talking to a friend of mine. There's some really great young photographers out there. And uh, one thing is right now, a lot of people, it seems, want to use these photographs of protests and are asking to use them for free. In my case, as I said, I've raised a bunch of money using these photos. I don't think young photographers should be taken advantage of by giving their photography for exposure. That's something that's a real pet peeve. Uh, my friend Mel D. Cole posted about that today. Uh, Marcus Russell Price uh, is another one because people are going to them saying, hey, this would be good for you. You know, I'm a, I'm a prominent artist and I'll feature your, your photography in my video. But no, that doesn't help the community because these guys are black photographers that are part of the community. They're out there risking their lives every day. And it really kind of pisses me off that people want to take advantage of that. So what I would say to young photographers, A, follow your heart, find your voice, find your style, keep working at it. It doesn't happen overnight. Sometimes it may take you years to really develop your style. But once you have it, you have it. Stick to it. Don't compromise. And really get recognized uh, and get respect for your work. If somebody wants to use it, they should pay for it. And of course, unless it's something you're doing for charity or something, that's very different. Um, but that's my uh, word of advice. Thank you guys so much.